Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about Bluetooth Low Energy and its relationship or possible relationship to C++ classes. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Bluetooth Low Energy is uh, uh, one of the uh, protocols that is available through Bluetooth and it allows a device like, for example, your ESP32 to be able to connect to another device like, for example, your cell phone using the Bluetooth protocol. Now, uh, Bluetooth comes in a number of forms and the one that we're focusing on today is Bluetooth Low Energy. Bluetooth Low Energy, otherwise known as BLE. And the notion behind Bluetooth Low Energy is that one device acts as a server and the other as a client. So the client connects to the server and they communicate with each other. But, un <coughs> excuse me, but unlike TCP IP, which is just a stream of data, BLE maintains the logical concept of something like a database. So if you want to think of it like that, the BLE server has a database of records and each one of those records BLE calls a characteristic. So a characteristic is a value held by the BLE server database which has a named property. So the name is a UUID, uh, uh, one of those 128-bit uh, long uh, hexadecimal binary data fields which is guaranteed to be unique across everywhere. So given that the BLE server is hosting these characteristics and a client can connect to the BLE server, the client can then say, give me the value of that characteristic and the BLE server will return it. Conversely, the uh, client can ask the BLE server to store a new value in the BLE characteristic and the BLE server will save that record so that next time it's read, uh, that new value will be retrieved. So at a high level, that's the notion behind BLE. I just wish it was that simple. BLE has the concept of devices. So, for example, your ESP32 may be a device. BLE then has the concept of services, and a service is a collection of one or more characteristics, where those characteristics are then logically grouped together to perform that service, whether it's heart rate monitoring or temperature sensing or whatever it might be. So you've got a, a hierarchy of notions, and that's not the only notions, but these are the ones we'll, we'll, we'll concern ourselves with just now. So in order to create an ESP32 acting as a BLE server, you have to initialize the BLE server, then you have to initialize the BLE service, then you have to initialize each of the BLE characteristics, then you have to start listening for incoming events because the BLE server is event driven, driven by client requests from, uh, from the network, and then you have to respond to those events. Well, the ESP IDF does have a rich API for managing all of those. However, it's rich, it's complicated. There's a lot of things you have to do. So when you've got a lot of things and you've got state management, this becomes an excellent opportunity to include uh, C++ or other object-oriented programming language encapsulation. So instead of working with the lowest level APIs, which are, you know, across the board, we could create a C++ class that encapsulates the BLE server, that encapsulates the BLE ca uh, service, and then encapsulates the BLE characteristic. The logic implemented in these classes would know what to do with those different char uh, different uh, objects and the implementation of those uh, methods, of those capabilities of the object would then be hidden or not visible to the end user who merely sees the highest level functions that they want to work with. Alright, so those are the words. Now let's see what we've got in practice. So we've created ourselves a BLE C++ class library. So here's an example of a C++ client application, a client application, whoops, a client application that uh, provides the interface to BLE. 
and this is it. This is literally it. Now, if you've ever tried to work with BLE in ESPIDF, boy, you'll see that you have to have pages and pages of stuff. So let's walk through this code at a real high level. We won't spend a line by line on it, but just to give you the notion. So the first thing we do is we create ourselves a new instance of a BLE server. No parameters to that. Just create me a server. And then once we have the server, we say create me a service. Now every service has to have a UUID. So we pass in the UUID and we get back an object that represents our service. Now we have a service, we ask it to create our characteristic. The characteristic is associated with the service and also has its own UUID. We also specify the properties such as what can we do with this characteristic. Can we read it? Can we write it? Now a characteristic has a value, so here I say this is the value of this characteristic. Then we start the service, which of course makes us start listening, and then we get from the server the ability to start advertising, and we start advertising, and then we run it. And that's it. That's a BLE server. So I've got this already uh, uh, defined running on my ESP32. Let us now bring up my cell phone. So this is my cell phone and if I execute a scan we see that my BLE server running on my ESP32 is advertising itself. I hit the connect button and we connect from my cell phone using BLE to the ESP32. There were some log messages here because I've got debugging on to say that it's done. So we're now connected to my BLE server running on my ESP32 and it says we've found, a, uh, we've found a service. Now it says unknown service because it's not one of the uh, BLE architected services. This is a custom service. This is a user service. And if we look at the service UUID which ends in AF4F and we compare that to the, uh, I'm sorry, it starts in AF4F, we, we see here that the UID shows up here as our characteristic. I've got a suspicion I've got a bug here, I've got a suspicion this is backwards, but we'll come back to that later. So now that we see our service advertised here, what I can do now is I can connect to that service, or rather I'm connected to the service, and we see that we have our characteristic. Here's BEB and uh, BEB. Uh, yeah, I'm sure this is backwards, but I'll get that fixed. So here is our characteristic being advertised. Well, that's great. That's wonderful. Now, watch what happens if I say that I want to read from my characteristic. I hit the read button and it says, hello world, says Neil. Where did that come from? That's what we advert, that's what we set the value of that characteristic to be. But again, the key concept here is not that we could do this using uh, BLE. The ESP32 IDF allows us to do that. The notion here is that we've made it much, much simpler by encapsulating it as C++ classes. I think you'll find that this is relatively straightforward. So let's look at another sample. In this sample, what I want to do is every time the, uh, we read a value of the characteristic, I want to provide a dynamic value, not a hard-coded constant value. So now we're using the concept of C++ callbacks. I create a class instance that is a, a, a callback and on read I set the new value. So every time my BLE peer says read me the value, this callback gets invoked, this callback reads the current time and sets the value of the characteristic to be the current time. I set here the callback and we're good to go. So let me uh, compile that and flash that onto my ESP32. And now I've recompiled and flashed it to my ESP32. Let's bring up my cell phone and let's connect to my ESP32. Now that we are connected, let me go and read the value of that characteristic. And every time I read the value, notice that the value returned is different because what's happening now is that on the ESP32 every time my cell phone says read the characteristic the on read callback is being called and we are setting the value to be the current time since boot. Oh that's excellent, that's good. Now let's look at one more demonstration and this is 
writing a new value. So just like the ESP32 has, can have a callback for on read, we can have another callback for on write. So every time the BLE partner, the peer, sends a write request to the ESP32, we can get a write callback and we can get the current value and process it. Maybe we turn on an LED or turn on a light or, or some other such thing. So let me recompile that and we will be back in a second. Okay, we've recompiled and reflashed. Let's one last time bring up the uh, uh, cell phone scanner. We connect to my cell phone. Uh, I'm sorry, my connect to my ESP32. We are connected, and now let us write a value. So let's write the value uh, uh, hexadecimal. I don't know FE, and hit the send button. Hit the send button, and there we see the new value on the ESP32. FE. Let's try it again. Let's say one, two, three, uh, let's say one, two, and run, and one, two. And as we see, we are receiving data on the ESP32 from the cell phone. Well, this has been uh, just a quick high level overview, but the key concepts here, the key concepts are that we have the ability to leverage C++ classes that make the work of interacting with BLE hopefully as straightforward as it can be. We create the instance of the server, we create the instance of the service, we create the instance of the characteristic, we say run, we start advertising and everything then runs on our behalf there. So we don't have to worry ourselves with the glue level underlying plumbing in order to get this all working. Now this is still a work in progress. We are a long way from uh, uh, having this uh, fully bulletproofed, but uh, this is an open source project, fully 100% open source. I welcome collaborators, please come, and come along, join the game and I welcome comments and any features you need, any bugs you find, I'll try and attend to them as quickly as I can. Uh, but this is uh, just some give back to us in the community where uh, we can interact with BLE at a much higher level than we can through uh, just the lowest level ESP IDF. Of course, this does mean that you have to be conversant with C++. I argue that C++ is a very rich and powerful language on the ESP32 environment. I can really see no great reason for not using C++. It seems to be every bit as efficient as coding in native C with the obvious values that you get all of the function of classes and objects and all the other good things including inheritance by using C++. And thankfully it's if you know C it's not that difficult to learn C++. Alright, so again, this is July 2017. Chances are this uh, the code base will change over the next weeks and months ahead. But um, again, um, thank you for listening and uh, look forward to collaborating with you on BLE and C++. Thanks guys and bye for now.